Today we're going to discuss depth of field and the factors that affect it. The first thing is aperture. That directly affects your depth of field. If you shoot wide open, then your depth of field is reduced. Less is going to be in focus. This would be maybe on your lens it's the f3.5 or even f5.6. On faster lenses, maybe f2.8, f1.8, f1.4, etc. These are fast apertures and they're going to reduce your depth of field. If you go the other way and you stop down using f32, f22, f16, all of these are going to give you a larger depth of field. More is going to be in focus. The next thing that affects depth of field is the distance your subject is from your camera. The further away from your camera your subject is, the larger your depth of field. This is why when you shoot mountains, they seem to be entirely in focus. The closer to your camera your subject is, the less it's going to be in focus. This is where someone up close for a portrait, you would find that the background is thrown out. And the last thing that affects depth of field is the length of your lens. A longer lens, say 200 or 300 millimeter, is going to reduce the depth of field. A shorter lens, say 18 millimeters, 24 millimeters, is going to increase the depth of field. This is why on a wide shot where you're trying to take in a large, vast area, everything seems to be in focus. But then when you go and put on your telephoto and you shoot that wild animal, only the wild animal is in focus. Aperture affects your depth of field. As you can see here, shooting wide open, I'm at f2.8 and my I'm very close to the object that I'm shooting. I'm using a macro lens to get up really close and you can see that there's very little in focus. And I can shift my focus here and there and you can see it's just a little tiny sliver. Now I'm going to stop down very slowly and here I am at f8 and you can see a whole lot more is now in focus. Shift it around it's still a pretty small sliver. For reference, there's my finger. Now I'll stop down again further. And now, stopped down to F32, you can see that pretty much everything right here is in focus. So I've brought Tristan out to help demonstrate how depth of field changes as the subject gets further from the camera. Here you can see the background is all pretty soft, but Tristan is nice and focused. Now he's going to move back for me. Go ahead, Tristan, go back to the next toy. And we'll adjust our focus here. Now he's in focus again. And if you particularly watch the grass, you'll see as it more and more gets in focus. Go back further again to the next one. And he moves a little further away. And now we're getting a lot in focus. He's halfway between me and the building behind him. And now almost everything is in focus. Go ahead and move back to the next one. And say sponge at the end, Dad. Okay. And here we're pretty well in focus. You can see the grass in front of us is focused. Everything's looking really good. And move on back to the sponge. And now you can see pretty well everything is in focus. Simply by moving the subject further away, we get a larger depth of field. Once again, I have Tristan here helping out. Right now, this is to demonstrate the difference in the length of the lens. Right now, I'm using a 200 millimeter lens at f2.8. And you can see that he's in focus and everything behind him is out of focus. Now I'm gonna go ahead, this is a zoom, so I'm gonna zoom it out to 80. And now you can see things are starting to come into a little more focus. Now we're going to have to cut the film here. I'm going to have Tristan stay where he is, and I'm going to put a wide-angle lens on. Mommy? And now I'm shooting at 35 millimeters, and you can see this is again an f2.8, so I haven't changed that. My camera's in the same place. Tristan's in the same place. The only difference is I went from 80 millimeters to 35. And now you see everything's in focus. And as I zoom out to 17, absolutely everything is in pristine focus, even though I'm at f2.8.